हरियो हरियो हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स इन दिस रात ट्राइंग टाइम्स बट देयर आर सो मेनी डिफिकल्टीज एवरीवेयर द बेस्ट वी कैन डू हैव अ गुड लुक एट आवरसेल्फ्स रिमूव इन आवरसेल्फ्स what creates problems remove in ourselves that which is creating barriers between our conscious experience and the essence the divinity that is always there <clears throat> in these tensions it's so easy to look at things and then form opinions and be upset about it people look at their family at their friends at their country it what is happening in the world and are so upset of course there is a lot of upsetting stuff happening but if we want to contribute somehow something that this has a chance to turn into a better direction then we have to make order in ourselves sometimes i'm hearing people say i'm a realist realist but what is real what we see what we hear <laughs> what we smell is just a little aspect and then the information we are getting what's happening is always filtered through opinions and then we form an opinion and then we think it's reality and if of that picture of reality we are forming we let ourselves be pulled into heaviness and darkness and despair then actually we are contributing to the negativity of what is happening for me a realist is somebody who has the courage to look at oneself honestly see what's going on see how i'm creating tensions how i'm creating all those things that have the tendency to cut off the experience from the light from the divinity from something expansive you have the courage to look at it honestly and then work on it to remove it that is for me a realist <laughs> not somebody who just collects dark pictures of what is happening and then heaps them one on top of the other and gets more and more despair you are here to face challenges it's good to remember you are here to learn to grow to outgrow that little perspective that we are invariably acquiring by growing up in this world very opinionated usually most of the time very narrow not seeing the whole pictures <laughs> it's not easy to see the whole picture and even if we have opinions it's good to have that open heartedness to accept that the others may see it very differently and they have the right to do so as much as i have the right to have my opinions but if we want clarity we have to clear up the own inner mess and to do so it needs a lot of courage <clears throat> we can read spiritual books we can listen to lectures 
<laughs> we can do so many spiritual things. But what counts most is that we start to look at ourselves honestly, clearly, see how I'm functioning, see what I'm doing to myself, see how I'm creating my problems, my pains, my sufferings. I don't learn how to do that anymore. And that is the greatest contribution we can give to the world to give it a chance to change for the better. Everyone can contribute. If we do so, then our own life becomes light, playful, joyous. And that lightness, that playfulness, that joyousness radiates and helps others. And so it can spread. I'm not saying we should put <laughs> barriers and not look what's going on. We can very well see what's going on. We nothing wrong, informing ourselves if we want to. And of course, there we will see a lot of stuff that is not nice. But we can use that as an inspiration. Okay, there is a lot of stuff that is not nice, but that can inspire us to not contribute to that darkness, but do it differently, live differently. Learn to be in harmony with our essence. Learn to be in harmony with ourselves. Become aware of that joyousness that is not affected by what's going on and then radiate it out. It's radiating anyhow, or by itself, if we do so. That is the responsibility of everyone. We can get inspiration, we can get support, but step by step, everyone has to make those steps. Let us do so. Okay, my friends, I stopped talking just for myself, <laughs> by myself. I'm asking you, is there anyone who would like to come in? You're welcome to do so. I vaguely heard something. It's Claire. Can you hear oh, me? Hello. Now I can hear you. Hello, Claire. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, if the sound is not good, I'll just write it in the chat. I'm not sure about no, the reception I, here. I can hear you now very well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> nice um. to see you. Are you in Tiruvannamalai? Oops. No, um, we're in Himachal at the moment. Sorry, the reception uh, is bad. Yeah, okay. your picture has stopped and the sound also is cracking up. <laughs> ah, there you are again. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, if it becomes too bad, I just write it in the chat. Yeah. Could I just try one more time? Right. Um, okay, so my question is like this. Um, so, for example, if um, somebody is sitting in a meditation place and it's very quiet and then I come to meditate there and after some time that place becomes noisy, is it because my vibration is bringing the noise? <laughs> <laughs> that is a bit far-fetched <laughs> to think so. <laughs> Anyhow, if somebody complains about that, <laughs> that uh, because you come and meditate there and then outside it's getting noisy, 
then if they make you responsible for it, then you can tell them, okay, even if that is so, if your meditation is worth something, then that the external noise is not going to disturb you. <laughs> No, you cannot make uh, cause and effect connections like this and uh, say, oh, it was so peaceful when I was alone. And then when you came along and, and then you produced that external noise. <laughs> or, even, or even when, uh, I mean, even if you except there would be a possibility still that meditator should be capable to accept that it's a bit noisier and then still continue the meditation. <clears throat> In the beginning when I was there with Amma, we were, had just a few huts and she told me to sit. Sit, you want to sit, you can sit, so sit. And then I sat, <laughs> but I had to struggle to somehow take a little bit control of my whirling mind. And then there was a lot of action going on around me. And then uh, I complained to her, can I not go in a peaceful place? Uh, uh, it's too noisy here. It's too much action. And she told me a little story is that there one fisherman uh, had caught his fishes and then he went home and the nearest path was that he went straight through a temple compound with his basket of fish on the head. And the one priest was scolding him, how can you dare with your dead fish go through the temple? This is impure. And the fisherman rep replied to the priest, oh, what I'm having here on my head is absolutely nothing compared to all the impurities you have in your own body. <laughs> so don't you scold me because of my fishes. She wanted to say all that little noise that is outside, there's nothing compared to all that noise you have in your own head. So don't you complain about the little external, <laughs> the little external noise. <clears throat> no, don't let yourself be pushed into feeling guilty when somebody talks like this to you. I mean, it's forfeit to say it's because of you that it started to get nosy outside. Oh, that's a weird speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't hear you again. No, I don't hear you. Okay, I let, oh, I now let somebody I hear else you. speak. Now I yeah. hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, shall we leave it at that? Yeah, I mean, maybe later if there is space, I'll ask something okay. else, but I'll leave it for now. Thank all you. All right, all right. Ario, ario. <laughs> okay, is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. Yes, hi. <laughs> Hello, Leora. Yeah, this was a good um, point. Um, I have been like, yeah, to not blame the outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's not really that there is an outside and inside. It's not like, when there is a person or a dog or something, then we can so-called blame them for our restlessness or depression or whatever. Um, so, like getting to this place where we don't blame. Yeah. Actually, the way, let, let, I, I can make it simple. Um, as you said, just like direct, I'm not sure this is how you said, but I'll say, direct the attention to what go, goes 
inside this body. Um, and then it goes to very, very set subtle resolutions. Because when somebody said something and annoyed me, it's easy. Many times when I'm restlessness or uh, restless or upset, I, I hear this. It's because. Yes. And there's always a because. So then yes. it becomes a bit about <laughs> ridiculous. And, you know, uh, ridiculous because. I mean, you know, I've heard what you said now so many times, but and then I need the courage, the courage to to go deeper. Yeah. And this never ends, really. This never ends. Somehow, there's so many layers. And even when I think that I cleaned the house completely, vacuumed and wiped the floor, anything. <laughs> I don't wipe the floor any longer. I only use the broom and the, the vacuum because I realize it's it's also endless. <laughs> but this is, yeah, this is crucial. So maybe it's so simple, as you say, just to remind myself, maybe I don't even have to see to actually look for the reason, just realize whatever, whatever, just relax. Mm. I don't, I, maybe I don't need to analyze where it comes from. I feel restlessness, my legs, my belly, my chest is a bit tight. So just breathe and notice it. That's so simple. Right. Yeah, and I'm used to, I'm used to all this, um, you know, trying to analyze and understand yeah. where and whom and what and why and because of my mother and because of the way yeah, I grew yeah. up. Yeah, right. And uh, if we do that, there is no end to it. It's a jungle where we can get totally lost and half of it uh, may also be our imagination when we try to find causes for what is going on. So. Exactly as you say, just deal with the experience. If you feel restless, if you feel tension, deal with that restlessness, deal with the tensions, no matter where it's coming from. And if it's necessary somehow for the growth to be capable to let it go, then suddenly it comes by itself where it has originated and the, the mechanisms where it came about, but most of the time it's not necessary at all. Just deal with the experience, let it go and, and done with it. Okay, so that brings me to my, my uh, experience that have been oh, like recently. Uh, in a way, maybe also to not you know, this habit of, of learning from a past experience for not doing something that last time I did it made me unhappy or nervous or put me in danger or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe like what I experience is a little bit more courage, but I don't feel the courage right on all the time. I just do things like somehow something in me opens in an unknown way for me because I don't keep my mind busy all the time whether I should be doing this or whether I should not be doing this. Like maybe I can give an example. On Wednesday we had like a small party, like the Passover, yeah, whatever, small party. Yeah. So um, well, there were a few people and we, we played some games about music and singing and so and then I recalled a, a, a song that we used to sing for, for this holiday that we pass over that we just had and I just start, started singing it and everybody listened and they, I sang it all the way to the end and then there was a small voice say, saying wow what, what did you do I mean this really like maybe you didn't sing well or something mm -hmm. But then I said, so, I mean, they all listened. I did it and it's fine. Yeah. So, so this is like small thing, but 
can be other things more like, you know, put me in stress or whatever. But now I think maybe I shouldn't be learning from experience only when it's something really serious, like, you know, crossing the road and things like that. But like, just like move forward if I have the urge to do something, which can be nice, not harming. Yeah, yeah, They're but just... the two are not uh, exclusive. Does it mean uh, I'm agreeing with you? Be spontaneous, be natural, and move forward. That doesn't mean we should not learn from the experience. If we do okay. something totally, uh, we understand if I'm behaving in a certain way like this, it just creates pain, pain for me, pain for the other, then uh, that is a good lesson to learn. And uh, we can have that wisdom that is automatically there and will influence our decisions in the future. That doesn't mean you have to prove before you do anything, is it right, is it wrong? Because if you really have learned a lesson, then you don't even have to think about it. It's clear that uh, if I do so, it's hurting, so I don't do. <laughs> That's an important uh, um, point, what you said now. So it's like somehow in my system, that they yes. don't have to worry, like to think so much. Oh yeah, remember last time you you did so and so, you weren't happy. So you just say that somehow it's like built in the system, and I can sense it, and like I can remember it, my nervous system or something. Well, it's uh, not in the nervous system; it's in you, in your consciousness. In in your, my consciousness. Yeah, it's in your consciousness. And then uh, automatically came, comes a warning lamp, look, and, uh, and you understand in a split moment and drop the whole thing. Or even if you then start to think about I could do this and like that, then more and more you will come, uh, then will also come the memory more clearly and say, but I know if I'm doing that, it's it's not harmonious, it's not helping me, it's not helping anyone, it just creates pain, then of course, then it's good to learn from past experience, but not in a way that we should be afraid to do something. Be relaxed and natural and let things come and flow as they come and flow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like eating stuff that don't make me happy or don't make me go feel good, then sometimes I really have the desire, then I should maybe stop myself from doing it. That's easy. I mean, yeah. or if, maybe, I, if I know. Maybe yeah. in reasonable quantities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then Thank we you. leave it at that. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Are you? Are you? <clears throat> I see Andreas comes in. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Werner. Mm -hmm. Last time you mentioned the subtle body. Can you explain <laughs> what it is? Can I explain what the subtle body is? Well, yeah. uh, there are different aspects, uh, different layers also of sub subtlety, but of, of course there is not simply the physical body, that the whole this mysterious <laughs> happening of connection of consciousness with with the body, with matter, with a piece of meat. <laughs> there, there are quite some layers in between. And there are uh, people who distinguish this many layers, other people that many layers, but uh, as there is the gross body, the matter that we know as matter, there is su subtler matter that is coexisting in the same place that makes this life experience possible as it is. If we feel the body, 
and then really relax very quickly one starts to feel not so physical come like it's more, more feeling like energy and that's already the start of feeling more the subtle body than the gross body hmm. physical body is also energy on a certain level certain vibration after all science knows that the physical level is also not solid it's just a play of energy but uh, to our human experiences to our human senses it appears as solid matter and then the subtler bodies they are also matter but subtler matter subtler energy but there are different layers to that and i think you can distinguish layers as you want because if you start to have the concept then uh, it has a certain power that it is also experienceable like that so let's not get lost in trying to figure out the details of the subtle body but it's good to be aware that this physical body could not function if there was not that subtle energetic body simultaneously there. I mean, I know from a neurophysiological um, perspective that like the body is basically a representation that is in the brain. I mean, that's the, the that's, but it's a total, you know, it's a different viewpoint, but so I know that it's like, it has to be like constructed and put together by brain activity that would be like a neurobiologist would say. Mm -hmm. And, but what you're talking about is the experience, how you experience the different levels, right? Good. And of course, I, I would say, of course, the brain is totally involved, but it's just the instrument. It's not starting there. Prior to the brain, is that subtle function and then through the brain you uh, connect on this level and the brain has to function properly that this also can function properly <laughs> but it's not starting with the brain the brain as a physical organ is the transmission station <laughs> but so so are other energy places it's not simply the brain i mean <clears throat> Everybody is now talking about, it's very popular in the new age to talk about the chakras and the, the, the chakras are there. These are energy places of the subtle body. You cannot find them on the physical level. They are of the subtle body, but it's not simply those seven famous chakras. There are energy centers all over the body in the organs in the hands and the feet everywhere there are energy centers and the whole the whole physical couldn't function without that although the physical brain is involved that in order to make this nervous system cooperate it's not starting on the on the brain level <laughs> Does the body drop away at a certain point in meditation? The body, I mean, drops away as an experience of physicality. But somebody who will see you sitting there meditating will still see your physical body sitting there meditating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I mean, in my own perception as a meditator, not that, that I'm that someone is disappearing. Right. Uh, in a certain state of absorption, you certainly don't feel physical. And that can come up, become after that so natural that actually you never really feel physical. That uh, you rather feel the whole manifestation is more a ball of energy that is playfully moving around. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, so far. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Are you? Are you? Are you? <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to come? You're welcome.
Ah, oh, there are two okay. cameras open. <laughs> I can wait. No, no, it's fine. Ah, now Claire has gone, so you can go, okay. <laughs> Kristen. <laughs> we are all so polite. <laughs> no, it was. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little throaty. Um, I have an additional question to um, to when you were talking about the energy centers, the chakras. Yeah. And it's a it's a more theoretical uh, question, something I've been wondering about, and um, um, as I have been telling you, I have been practicing very much this Tibetan yoga mm -hmm. uh, from the Burn tradition, and um, there are some there are some uh, breathing exercises where you always go down to the Hara center, inhale to there, and then you bring the breath or the, the prana to different areas. Yep. Uh, and I was just wondering because, I mean, my, um, my understanding is, uh, like you say, this with the seven chakras, it's something that has happened quite recently that this has, this has been kind of an accepted, it's like that, you know, many of my students, they talk about it as it's a reality. There are these seven chakras. And I, I try to open it a little bit up <laughs> that it might be a little more, um, um, what is the word? A plural, 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 pluralistic. <laughs> yeah. But so, somewhere down the line, because it, in, the, in the Tibetan, the, the hara, uh, the center in the belly is very important. And also if you go more east, to uh, where the Qigong and the Tai Chi uh, traditions come from. They talk about the lower Dan Chen in the belly and then the middle in the heart and then there's the head. Yeah. So I just wonder uh, if you know when uh, this kind of very importance that is put in the earlier days to the belly area, when that kind of um, uh, changed into the seven chakras and and how I feel very much what I meet here in the West is the focus on the Atnya uh, or on the Mulada. Mm -hmm. And you wonder whether this is good? No, I just wonder if you know, because I know you also have a, a lot of theoretical um, uh, knowledge. Uh, when did this, this happen in history? And, um, and maybe you also would know why it happened mm -hmm. that they made this kind of very simple thing now the seven chakras and they have specific colors and i have yeah. never seen those colors for example right, right. <laughs> so many other things but, yeah. yeah i don't know when this happened but it certainly has it wasn't uh, in india that the belly chakra was so important but the, mm -hmm. the farther you go east the more it was given a main importance, mm -hmm. right? In India, there yeah. was always the talk about the seven, and of of these three, there were the uh, of these seven, there were three main uh, importance, like the belly and the heart and the third eye. That somehow mm -hmm. you have to un undo the knots that are there. <laughs> mm. That was also in India that they put more importance to those three. Yes. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, in the yogic tradition, they talk about uh, uh, certain knots that has to be open. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But, but they were always in the whole yogic tradition, they were always busy with the seven chakras. <clears throat> and it has a bit a different flavor where you are focusing more, but then it depends entirely the person what is more natural and how serious, how sincere you are about your practice. You can connect with the essence no matter where you are focusing. Mm -hmm. Right. For the, in the Chinese and Japanese, spirituality is always, always very much connected with movement, with the body or with martial arts. And then for that to have a physical stability, it was very helpful to be rather mm. in the belly than up there in the third eye. That, right. that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> but uh, for your inner experience, it doesn't really matter. Mm. 
Mm. So I'm telling always people when they want to focus, find their own center. It doesn't matter where you find it because it's not that reality, the self is more in one place than in another place. Mm. It's just uh, a help for the mind to connect. If we have a main center where it's most natural and most easy to focus that whenever there is tension, instead of trying on that level to figure out uh, some solution, just first center and relax. And then from there, it's already much easier. Mm. 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 <clears throat> yeah. And, and then all the, the, these descriptions of the chakras, the traditional descriptions, the, exactly how many petals they have, what kind of Sanskrit letters are in it, and what data yeah. is there, and how what kind of colors. This is all very poetic, but I personally cannot relate much to all that. If somebody mm. goes on that way and learns all that and starts to visualize that, then it becomes a reality, and somehow it may help that uh, those people to focus, to concentrate. But if you don't want to get into any of this, you are not missing anything crucial. Mm, <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. There's another thing because from my own practice, um, when I'm uh, at Aronachala, there's no doubt it's the heart the whole time. Yes. Then I come back to Denmark and then it's the Hara. And yeah. I, I experienced several times. And last time I was in Tiruvannamale, I, I decided, okay, it is the heart. It is the heart. And then I've come back to Denmark. And it's not alive in the same way, but it's really in the hara. And I think I just have to ex uh, accept that since I'm living in different places, different energy centers are alive, or they're all alive, but more active. Mm -hmm. What it do can, you think about that? It can also be connected that you feel somehow uh, in Denmark you have to be uh, you have to protect yourself more and mm -hmm. then uh, feel stronger on that level uh, by focusing in the hara like a martial martial artist <laughs> to be, <laughs> to be <Yeah>. strong <laughs> 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 Yeah. But if this happens, then don't don't fight it. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I have to accept it because I, I, I mean, also when I was in Sivananda Ashram, uh, they also said to find one sender, and it's always been a challenge to me. Yeah. And then since uh, this winter, I really decided it is the heart. <laughs> yeah. And then I come back and. Mm, so I think I just have to accept. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's a good picture this with the martial art because of course there are much more challenges and responsibilities here. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe that power is more um, uh, appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's not a Thank problem, you. so you don't need to make it into a problem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Hario. Mm. Hario. <laughs> so when Kristen came in, Claire again tried to come in. You still want to come in, Claire? Mm. Um, can you hear me? Is it okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, I just reformulated my question, so maybe it's good that it didn't happen straight away. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so I don't know really exactly what my question is, but if you could say something about how to cope with like um, just like very strong attachment, like mm. at the moment. Tas wants to be in his sadhana and doesn't want me nearby. And I'm really struggling, like, is like I'm I'm coping with it okay at the moment because I'm taking steps towards it, but I find like there's this feeling like I'm gonna die. Like mm. if he's not there, I will die. Mm. And like it's very strongly connected with um sexual attachment mm. and 
yeah, it's really, really, really hard. <laughs> and I'm going okay today, but it's, yeah, it's a struggle. So I just wondering if you could say something about that. Right. Uh, of course, you are not expecting that I'm going to direct uh, how your relationship is going. <laughs> no, <laughs> just about attachment. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, right, when you feel that. When in this situation, okay, for the time being, it's like this, uh, he wants to be alone and you have to deal with the situation and then these emotions come up. Then either you can turn them around and round and make them bigger and suffer terribly because of it, or then you just accept the situation for the time being, that's what it is. And then not try to suppress the emotions, the feelings that come. You said, uh, sometimes it feels like I'm going to die. <laughs> then uh, accept, okay, let that feeling come. So don't be afraid, you're not going to die. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. <laughs> just, just let the emotions come completely. And if you are not going into stories and reinforce them, but just, turn the attention totally to your experience right now and then watch what it is doing to you physically and energetically and learn to relax then it's no more overwhelming then these emotions may come you watch them you relax they stay a moment and they go they don't become bigger and bigger and they may come back and you do it again instead of trying to figure out a solution for the situation that uh, I'm feeling better, accept the situation for maybe may change, but for the time being, it is as, as it is. And my emotional reactions are there. If I suppress them, then they're just boiling there and bursting out sooner or later. If I'm hanging on to them and, uh, and turn around thinking, 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 they also become bigger and create more problems. But if I accept, okay, these reactions are there, these emotions are there. See right now what it is doing to your experience, what it is doing to your body, what it is doing to you energetically. And then consciously breathe with it and relax. And then suddenly, the experience is not more so terrible, it can become quite interesting <laughs> to just see. Even emotions one doesn't like, if we stop holding on to, then that attachment starts to dissipate, somehow like evaporate. And then it's just the experience, the emotion, how it is manifesting, you observing, and relaxing and in that observation and relaxation you become also aware there is that aspect in me that is not affected by it at all no matter what is happening emotionally energetically externally in the story whatever is happening there is that aspect in you that is absolutely not affected by it but the more you are capable of observing the emotions and the the stormy experiences and learn to center and breathe and relax, then the more you sort of make that aspect that is not affected your home. And then the attachment goes. The attachment stays on because we have a thought and an emotion, maybe first is the emotion and then we think, or the other way, first we think and then the emotions come, but they are going very much together. And then we think about it all the time, all the time, all the time, and then it's getting stronger and stronger. But if instead of that, we redirect the attention to our experience of it right now, not to what brought it about, but to our experience, see, experience how it really feels in the body energetically and relax then the attachment slowly disappears and uh, these emotions 
They come, they go, and they stop creating pain. I think you have to put the microphone up that I hear you. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you. I will listen to this some more times after and try You're to do welcome that. to do so. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you well. Are you? Are you? Are you? <clears throat> Is there anybody else? Who would like to come in? You're welcome. Yeah, I take the opportunity again. <laughs> Hello, Leora, again. Yeah, hi, yeah. Um, because you said, I mean, you say it every time somehow to somebody at least once in every meeting about bringing the attention here yeah and uh, just notice what it's doing here and there so I just wonder because until I met you I've learned that in Theravada and there are so many um, techniques of how to practice um, meta meditation or equanimity meditation or um, compassion, yeah, and all that. And I've been with you, I think now three years <laughs> since the journey to India. And I say, but he, he doesn't teach technique techniques he doesn't he just like um he says the, these things again and again and again but also when you talk to people somehow yeah you explain and you connect but then you always go back to to this technique which is not a technique <laughs> because yeah I, I i don't know what would be how it would be for me if I haven't been practicing so much in retreats and meditation and sat with so many teachers and heard all the theories yeah and everything all the teachings um or if I met you maybe 20 years ago or so and maybe sat in a cave it doesn't matter because I, I don't know but but really I wonder like Again and again, it is so simple, and yet it is not. I mean, what for me, I think what ha what what has been happening recently more and more um, intensively, I would say, is that it happens by by itself that the attention, like the attention, somehow. It just happens by itself. The energy like um, arranges itself. The the attention. I'm, I'm not sure uh, in this party where I was. They made a beautiful. The children made a beautiful mandala out of flowers and stuff. And and the mandala just like attracted my attention. There was so much energetic power there for some reason. Probably I was in in specific uh, state of being to react to it, and just like I I looked at it and I was like pulled into this um, um, deep 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 state of stillness and concentration, and then I had like to come out again, and it was beautiful. Of course, I didn't do it in purpose. It, it like happened. Um, it was soothing, and tears came into my eyes. It was really beautiful. It opened. Maybe this this what, what was what made me be able to sing like that. But again, if I go back to what I wanted to ref you to reflect on, is um, is it just like a question of repetition? 
just repetition, just to a, a reminder all the time, remind ourselves. That's because it's not a technique. It's not a technique. That's I think so anyway. What people feel is difficult because often I say also, it's not difficult. What what we need to do is basically very simple. And then mm -hmm. uh, also this winter here uh, on the roof, I said that and so after the satsang, somebody came. I'm always getting a bit irritated when you say it's so simple because you had to struggle for so many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what I mean when I say it's so simple, it's simple what needs to be done. What we feel is not so easy is to keep on doing it, <laughs> to have the courage, to have the sincerity, to have the perseverance to go on doing that simple thing. Now, what I'm saying is very simple, not really a technique as you say, but actually uh, I'm not saying anything against any of those techniques that are being no. thought. And if somebody has the experience and the habit to use a technique by all means, in a way what I'm talking about is essentially what, what all the techniques should do. That the, this is the essence of the practice that then after that we become aware in the present and learn to let go the tensions that stand in the way. So we can go straight away to simply do that directly, or then we can use a specific technique that helps us along. If that has been practiced and comes natural, that is absolutely not a contradiction with what I'm saying. It never came natural for me, never. Yeah, the techniques. To practice uh, the techniques yeah. never came natural. I could actually never do it, like a whole retreat about meta retreat or I actually had the resistance, but I did it. I did it many times. I did it. I just did it. And I felt, okay, this is difficult for you. One day you'll find your way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you yeah. need not bother about techniques and come straight to that simplicity. <laughs> yeah, it's only maybe now more intellectually uh, interesting for me, really. Uh, mm -hmm. It also feels a little bit like like uh, changing habits, like when there is restlessness or sadness or anger or whatever. Uh, for myself, the, yeah, my habits, some of them were bad, some of them were less bad, or some of them were even good. Uh, but sometimes it felt like uh, it still does. Like when I take a cup of tea when I'm a bit sad, I make myself a big cup of tea and go to the porch to sit. It's a habit. It's okay because it grounds me. Yeah. Uh, but of course, if I drank 10 cups of tea like that, black tea, <laughs> mm. then maybe it would have been not so great. Yes. <laughs> so and, and so it's like it's like like Jack Cornfield, he gave a beautiful evening for us in Israel with our teacher, Stephen Fulger. And they, they both keep saying, like, life is a dance. It, it was beautiful as they said it. Life is a dance. So it's like, so one, I will not stop drinking my tea. And sometimes when I feel sad or something, then, okay, fine, go make yourself a tea. But also remember... Bring the awareness here, and it's like it's like holding it lightly, as they say, or yes, like yeah, yes, yeah. And you can practice that with a technique or without a technique. You can practice that whether you are sitting in meditation or whether you are in full action. You can practice yeah, that whether right. you are alone or in a crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah whether you yeah. are keeping quiet or in the conversation, whenever you remember, you can practice of bringing the attention to the present, observe your experience right now and relax. Right. Yeah, sometimes it feels like a magic, so, <laughs> yeah. As I have said before, for me, 
the experience is the simplest techniques, the simplest helps are the most powerful. If we really do that, what is not so easy for the human mind trained to be complicated, to accept the simplicity of it and have the faith that it is really doing something. <laughs> so would you say that, uh, thank you for that. And also, uh, but just like, would you say that the mind is complicated by nature or? Yeah, what makes it complicated? The, the relationship between the no, habit. It's the habit. We grow up in a society and are being influenced by how everybody functions as a little kid. We are joining in, into the current and making always a big fuss about small things. <laughs> and, and then it's just a habit to function like this that, that makes us believe that uh, everything is complicated and everything good is very complicated. Well, we have to learn that the opposite is true. Simplicity is really bringing you to the essence. It's not the more it's complicated, the better it is. <laughs> no. It's just a habit, a conditioning that we have picked up growing up and uh, people have more or less trouble letting that go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's leave it like it's that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, if somebody else would like to come in, you're welcome. Hello, Vikas. You have to unmute. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello, Werner. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Well, my question is, uh, when I, it's real different, uh, when I'm doing Gita Upasana, like uh, Hanumanji or Krishna, mm -hmm. so is it possible to see them if I continue? Right, it is possible. First, you can see the picture outside, then you can close your eyes and imagine the picture, and eventually the picture may get animated. <laughs> So is it possible to talk to them also? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> so that is real or it is like it is just we are imagining? It's as real as the, if you if you say this world is real, then that also is real. <laughs> if you say this world is not real, it's relative, then you can say that also is relative. It's okay. still a manifestation. But as a manifestation and as an experience, it's real. Okay. okay. Yes. Right. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Somebody asked because Ramakrishna was always talking about uh, how he, he was talking with the Divine Mother and and somebody was asking him a bit critically, but you think uh, this all is real. It's not simply your imagination. And he says, well, I see it as clearly as I see you here, only that is more real than you. <laughs> it is it's stronger and clearer an experience than uh, that experience of this material level. No, it is possible, definitely. Okay. Thank You're you, Anna. You're welcome. How are you? How are you? How are you? I think when Vikas came in, there was another camera also lighting up. It was mine again. Ah, uh, it was Andreas. Hello. <laughs> um, the being in the present. Yes. Um, like the simplicity. Yes. 
Is it, a, is it a simple experience too? Because when you always say that it opens up more and more and more, I, I think of something, it must be something like special state or so, or I mean, it, yeah, is it, is it a special, ex, yeah, it, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a special experience, I know, uh, but yeah, is it, is it simple like being present like cats and dogs are? present when they relax or is it something where like you 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 become aware of subtle energies and higher and higher levels of per perception or um yeah. what exactly is going to happen cannot be predicted by because it's different from one person to another uh, and as we said last time yes it's in a way like the cats and dogs that relax and are naturally there, but on, the, on top of their experience, one can be conscious of being conscious, not simply instinctively being in that natural state. So it is an experience, momentary, it's an experience, it comes, you experience, it goes, but in that experience, you glimpse something that is simply there, that is not an experience. For this presence is there, whether we are aware of it or not. And we, if we are bringing the attention back to that, then it, that awareness stones maybe after some time and it's there for some time and goes away again. And then it's an experience. It feels like an experience, but in that experience, something has been shining through which is also there when we are not experiencing it. And then I say, essentially it remains the same, but the experience of it keeps on unfolding. And how this is going to unfold, you cannot say uh, that is going to be each one's own fantastic journey of discovery. <laughs> Some people practice a little and immediately they start to uh, see all kinds of subtle things and have uh, special experiences. Others practice and practice and practice and they don't have, obviously have any special experience or see subtle things. That doesn't mean that the first one is in a better state, but you can also just learn to be rooted in that immovable essence. And the experience may unfold in such a way that you just become stronger and stronger aware of it. The joyousness of it becomes clearer and clearer and more intensely experienced. Some may very quickly see subtle things and some may for a long time, long time, not see anything special. That doesn't mean that uh, one is better than the other. So you cannot say what is going to happen. So to have after that a measuring rod saying, oh, now I'm getting somewhere because this is happening. <laughs> but if as a general feeling, you become aware how that trust in it is getting stronger because the experience is intensifying simply intensifying with the intensity of sense of fulfillment, of peace, of a simple peaceful joyousness of existence, then you can be sure you're going in the right direction. Even if nothing especially happens if you don't see subtle beings and subtle energies and stuff. <laughs> Yes, sometimes I just, I mean, I, I, I focus on the present and stop my inner talk for a split second. And that's just, there's nothing special then there. It's just, just that I'm just talking to myself about something which is completely not there. Yeah. Um, and in the meditation, it's, it's sometimes I bring myself to just like looking at the floor and, or, I mean, this is, or, yeah, and it, then it's just like very simple. And if I close my eyes, yeah, there's some light. And when I'm 
meditated for a while and I'm, it's a little bit like spacing out more. There's a kind of presence there, but it's like, yeah, it, it's something subtler, you know, and I, I never know which one of the two is like the better experience or the, like the spacing out part is misleading me in a way. I don't know that it's, I'm, I asked you that before, I think, but yeah, <laughs> I'm still talking about it. Yeah. Just uh, when you go in that spacing out part, sort of keep the attention with that immovable, movable base as good as you can. And then the spacey experience is a perfectly valid also. <laughs> okay. I try that. Right. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much again. You're welcome. Okay. Would somebody else like to come in? So I'm saying this once again to people who practice, who have, may have practiced for a long time, may feel nothing really extraordinary has happened. Many people always talk about their spiritual experiences in much colors. <laughs> If that is not happening to you, and if you hear people talking like this, don't think that those people, they are in a better position because of it. What really matters is that capacity of consciously connecting with the essence. And this can be a very gentle process that it's slowly, slowly getting easier and easier, but such a gentle process that we are not even quite aware something is happening and yet something happens all the time, that we are getting firmer and firmer rooted in that. And this is much more important than all the wild experiences one can have. And even if experiences come, then let them come, let them be there, and let them go. We don't have to run away from them and push them away, but also we don't have to run after them. Also, when somebody had experiences, then after that, often they sit down and try to repeat the experience because they like the experience. There we are again going a bit off the track. Nothing wrong with experiences, they are inspiring to continue. So let them come, if they come, let them be there as long as they are there. Let them go when they go. Not think, what did I do wrong that they left? Okay, it's an experience. It's always coming and going. Rather have a positive, grateful attitude. Thank you for the moment of grace it has given me inspiration to continue. But if there is a gentle, increasing sense of peacefulness, if we become aware in situations, oh, I'm certainly are capable of dealing with situations quite cool, <laughs> calmly dealing with it, while pre I remember previous in the same situation, I used to react and shout and do all kinds of things. So there we have a clear indication, yes, something is really changing profoundly. Even if it looks little, it looks insignificant compared to the time I have invested in practice these little apparently insignificant pointers, they are very important and actually they point at something profound that profoundly 
something is letting go something that has been there barriers that we were not aware that they have been there that we have constructed maybe very early in our life babies have all these influences and a lot of it is un, not harmonious disharmonious a lot of tensions are there and then as children we have the tendency to react very strongly and in a way put barriers in place without quite knowing that we are doing that but put them in place because we think we need them to somehow survive the situations and after that they are there and they are very powerful whatever we have decided consciously or not consciously to do in the childhood is very powerful it's deeply rooted in the subconscious and often those things they prevent us from letting go from relaxing from being natural and with our practice we're becoming more and more aware in that increasing awareness stuff comes to the surface we deal with it we let it go and without being quite aware of it a lot of weight that we have been carrying along is slowly slowly disappearing sometimes the whole thing may go on we feel ah what a relief it has gone but then <clears throat> if we don't have this kind of sudden relief sudden shift suddenly we feel there a big step has happened there may be continuously a process going on that we are drop and drop and drop some of the weight that is there but it's a gentle progress it's a gentle process that we not quite are aware that anything is happening at all and we may think we are here and doing and trying and uh, are always in the same place but actually we are not subtly things are changing things are lightening up that is more important than the wild experiences but once again we don't have to push experiences away but we don't have to run after experiences let them come if they come by themselves let them go if they go by themselves see there is a message ah malu just said goodbye to everyone <laughs> I see. Nava, you would like to come in? Yes, please. You are welcome. Um, <laughs> hi. Hello. Um, I, I, know, I know that we shouldn't hang on to experiences. Yes. But my difficulty is that the experiences make everything else seem mundane. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, I know intellectually, yes, you just look at where things go from day to day and how things change, yeah. but it's difficult. It's still difficult for me because of what I said. The day to day seems so mundane, sometimes so pointless yeah. compared to what the experiences that I've had feel like. Yes, right. But for the mundane experience or for the subtler spiritual experiences, still the inquiry is what is it that makes the experience possible? It's the same. Learn to bring the attention back to that source of where the experience comes from. So, of course, in comparison, if you have spiritual experiences then after that 
all the mundane concerns and all the little things people are very busy with and think it's very important you may think oh god <laughs> <It's> not, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh god <laughs> why bother but then you can also use that as an exercise okay we can have the patience and deal with them and that level that which makes the experience possible is the same whether the experience is mundane or subtle, whether it's worldly or spiritual. And the source, the root is that which is prior to the experience. So, as I said before, don't push the experiences away, but the, it, it shouldn't also make you incapable of dealing with the mundane because you think they are too silly to deal with. <laughs> Mm -hmm. then accept the exercise okay i bring the attention on that level and if you are not resisting then suddenly it's not more a problem then you can while dealing with the mundane stuff learn to be relaxed learn learn to be centered learn to be aware of that bubbling joyousness of existence in spite of dealing with some silly mundane stuff <laughs> Yeah, that is the hard part. <laughs> that is the hard part. <laughs> well, we make it harder by resisting, by thinking, oh, I don't want. And if you don't need to, you don't have to. But uh, there is in everyone's life so many mundane stuff we simply cannot avoid. So instead of always approaching it with reluctance and with, uh, oh no, God, I have to do that again then we can learn to not resist. Okay, that's part of this human experience, of this human journey. So, all right, if I'm not resisting, then I can learn to relax in the midst of the most mundane situation and actually become aware that which counts most is there all the time, no matter what then it stops being so annoying. <laughs> mm. yeah. uh, a further question that's connected. Yeah. yeah. Um, I find that I'm watching myself too much. I don't know if that's possible, but it's trying to come back to the present, mm -hmm. seeing how I'm reacting. It's as if sometimes I'm watching myself all the time and it feels like too much. I think the watching part is not a problem, but then there is the tendency of being judgmental about it and categorizing. This is good, this is bad, this is good. And no, why, why, why those, those again? And then that judgmentality that you can start to learn to relax that. The watching actually is happening all the time. When, when we say we, bec we start to watch, it's more that we turn the attention back and become aware watching is happening all the time. <laughs> that uh, there is that immovable part and from there the watching simply happens. But what is becoming tiresome, what you think you are watching too much is not so much the watching part, but then after that the categorizing part and the judging part and the, putting into good and bad and right and wrong and there you can learn to let that go because the more we are aware the more we are conscious and in harmony the less we have to hold on to all that it's not that when we let that go that we after that are lost and don't know what is right and wrong in contrary because what is called right is that which is in harmony with existence and that which is what feels not right is in this harmony and the more you are aware this is happening after that spontaneously we don't have to be there as judge all the time behind and and make categories so that is the tiring part so don't think the watching is too much but try to see when you are attaching the other aspect to it, and then that one you can learn to let go. That sounds right, because that's exactly what happens. 
Yes. I'm watching and I didn't do it right or I didn't do well yes. enough or I should be more connected or yeah, yeah. more in the present. That's the big one. Okay, that's that's right. When you become aware, okay, then I had a completely unconscious moment, then you just no fuss, bring your attention back and relax. No, oh my God, I, sh I, I was again not good. I was again not concentrated. Mm -hmm. oh, that is already uh, again going into the story instead of simply being here. And then when you see that you do that, then you say, uh uh, okay, there I go again. I see you. Not necessary. Let it go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you? If somebody wants, we have a little more time. There comes Anita. Hello, Anita. Hello. Uh, is it last time we talked about karma? And yes. I thought, yeah, uh, actually, I, I would be interested more in Dharma, mm -hmm. but maybe they, they belong together. Um, yeah. That's my Just you want me to talk about, about more what is dharma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Of course, then the different traditions may use the word differently, but essentially it simply means everything that is in harmony with existence is dharma. Mm -hmm. And not simply that you follow a certain religious procedure and religious rites and, and that in the and then in the traditions that may be very much included is what dharma means, but basically everything that helps you to be consciously conscious, to be relaxed, to be in harmony, that is dharma. <laughs> and everything that pulls you away from that is a dharma. <laughs> okay, that's a good shot. <laughs> and then the explanations about it, uh, they, they become endless, what belongs to dharma and that dharma, but uh, it's really what the heart feels, mm -hmm. what makes you natural, what helps to bring your attention home to yourself, what helps you to be at ease, at peace and relaxed, that is dharma. Mm, very nice. And then uh, like there comes in right away, I think there's samskara because, samskaras, because I, I think those are exactly, that's the reason why the dharma is not shining. <laughs> so easily or not so easily accessible. You cannot really say so, because there are some skaras basically means our tendencies that we have accumulated while, while growing up in, in so many ways, tendencies that are there that direct our behavior. But there are some skaras, it's basically neutral because I mean, somehow or other, we have to appear. <laughs> somehow or other, we have to spend our time. So there are tendencies that help us to stay in harmony. Tendencies of how to behave, how to spend our time, that is very helpful to be in harmony, that they don't disturb the dharma, but then there are tendencies that are uh, very much acting against it. And those samskaras, we better learn to recognize that they are there and learn to detach that they gradually disappear because they will always pull you into a dharma, into this harmonious way of acting. But tendencies as such by themselves is not wrong because, I mean, somehow or other, we have to present ourselves on this three-dimensional level. <laughs> Even if you are aware, 
you are not that person. That person is just the role. There is still, as an appearance, that personality there, somehow or other. It can be a nice or a not so nice personality. And those tendencies that don't pull our attention away from the essence, they are no harm at all. We don't have to, to somehow try to get rid of those also. So it's not that some scars as such are a mistake. We just have to see which some scars that are creating problems all the time. And then we can learn to somehow or other detach from those that they gradually go. Okay, so that means that there are also kind of creative, positive some scars. Like definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. Yes. And then, because this is so nice, you say it's so clear, everything, and in short, uh, and since we don't have much time, but then the karma, how would you explain that? Karma. Karma. Yeah. <clears throat> karma is basically just the law of cause and effect. So if, if you throw something out, it has the tendency to come in one way or another back. If you send out negative emotions, anger, hatred, then uh, so sometime or other something similar may come back to you uh, as a reaction. It's something that is within time and space in the three-dimensional world, this law does exist. Cause and effect, you hit your head, it hurts. <laughs> it's karma. <laughs> Here, now, you're stepping out of time. It's timeless. So here now you're stepping out of the law of karma. Here now, you are, there is no karma. It's just in the manifestation, in the game, in the role that we are playing, karma is there. But uh, we can learn to detach from the actions and then we don't create karma all the time. And if the more we are emotionally attached, the more we are bringing attention into the current that somehow or other has the tendency to have an effect. But the more you are also stepping out of it, moments that you're just here now, it's like you're stepping out of time and space into a timeless, spaceless awareness of existence. And here now there is no karma. And if you learn to do that more and more, then the karma that is still there has less and less of an effect. It doesn't necessarily need to manifest. Oh, great, thank you. So shall we leave it with that yeah. for today? Yeah. Right. Yes. Hurry up, hurry up. Thank you. <laughs>